This is the seventh section of the series, which is titled Creating an Admin Interface. In this section, we will be building an administrator interface for our app by introducing another Flask extension called Flask Admin. We will use Flask Admin in order to interface with the SQL Alchemy models, as well as the file system our server is running on. Video 1 of Section 7 is titled Setting Up. In this video, we will download and set up Flask Admin as well as create a simple page on the admin interface to demonstrate how Flask Admin works. Let's start by downloading Flask Admin with pip. Now that Flask Admin is installed, it needs to be initialized and registered on the application object like the rest of the object in the last section. First, import and create an instance of the admin object, which we will name admin in extensions.py and then register the extension on the app in underscore init underscore dot py. Now, because Flask Admin provides good defaults while being extremely extensible, we can already see the beginnings of the admin page in the web browser. Just go to localhost colon 5000 slash admin, and all you will see is an empty page with this navigation bar, which will fill up as we register pages on the admin object. The way you add content to your admin page is by creating instances of Flask Admin view objects. View objects are like blueprints in the sense that they combine several normal Flask views and allow you to apply them to the admin object multiple times. But these view objects also handle some Flask Admin specific functionality, like how to automatically add in a link into the navigation bar that we saw earlier. Before we start working with our models, Let's create and add a simple page into Flask Admin to understand how it functions. As stated before, the view objects act much like normal Flask views, so if you needed to add something like a page containing reports on your site's analytics, you would add it to the admin page through this method. The view object will be stored in a new file called admin.py in the controllers folder. First, import the base view class and the expose functions from Flask Admin. Next, we will need to create the class that will be registered on the admin object by inheriting from the base view class. Any methods that are created in this class can be made into views by adding the expose decorator to them. For example, this index method will now be accessible from the root of the subpath of slash admin. So for example, if an instance of this class is registered on the admin object with the name of custom, then this view will be accessible from slash admin slash custom slash. Also, because Flask Admin needs to add in its templates and macros, it has a custom template rendering function accessible from self-render. Any call to self-render will look for the file in a subdirectory of templates called admin. So, create an admin folder in the templates folder with a new HTML file called custom.html inside of it. All of the Jinja templates that will be used in Flask Admin will inherit from admin slash master.html, which sets up the page layout and all of the Flask Admin control elements. To insert content into the body of the page, override the content of the body block, just as we did in the base.html file. The structure of the master.html file is rather complex, so here is a listing of all the different content blocks on the page and what each of them is for. This information will allow you to easily extend the admin interface for yourself. Now we can go to the web browser and see the results of our simple view object in action. As you can see, a link was added to the navigation bar, and if we click on it, we get the content from our HTML file. That is all for this video, so let's summarize what we have done so far. We have installed Flask Admin, and we have also created a simple view object that represents a collection of the pages on the admin interface.